We are starting webinar, Precast Concrete 101, Modeling and Documentation in Revit. My name is Valens Balsiachus, I'm a structural engineer and application engineer. Um, in AgaCAD, we create solutions based on the experience of most advanced users. And um, our mission is to reduce stress while switching to BIM to eliminate all the unnecessary job and we have uh, one of the biggest widest range of applications for Autodesk Revit uh, and today we'll talk about precast concrete but you see that we have solutions for framing we have solutions for MEP guys for uh, family management um, and some other add-ons then uh, we are also industry partners for precast concrete with Autodesk so that's really important thing and um, what we will talk about in this webinar it's about precast concrete and then uh, you can create precast elements insert connections place reinforcement sort elements and create sharp drawings right then um, so this is in more detailed uh, version of what you will see but uh, basically we'll um, we will see, right? Uh, and um, yeah, just the latest tools are uh, wall reinforcement and beam reinforcement. So you will see a little bit of these as well. And we'll end up with um, just splitting walls, inserting connections, right? Um, creating reinforcement and creating sharp drawings, right? So that's basically the workflow today. All right, so I'm gonna switch to my Revit window. Now, this is um, Revit window. I have some sample project over here, right? On the right side, I have tools for BIMDOC, which I will use today because from this is like uh, our tool for management of licenses, of tools, of getting trials, activating of the tools and so on. So today I'm gonna pick this one, Precast Concrete. And inside of it, I have uh, beam reinforcement, floor panel layout, smart assembly, smart connections, different kind of tools, which I will show you today, right? And um, over here, I have um, already some walls created. I have some floor as well. And um, some of the walls are already like panels and some still are not uh, divided, so the first thing I want to do, I want to finish with a uh, wall division. And um, for that, I will use Smart Walls tool. I'll go here, pick this menu, and I'll open Split Wall menu. Here I have some settings, how to split around openings, how what should be the panel size, what should be maximum panel size, and I can use these settings to split my walls with all of these commands, right? So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks here. So I select this long wall and then one of the commands like split from the start, right? So this command splits to the defined size of the panel. So it's two and a half meter in my case, uh, right? So we have it like this. And then the last piece is a little bit smaller. Uh, we can join it if you want to with another one and split again if, if that's uh, what we need. But basically we can use all of these commands on any of the walls. So for example, this one, I will select it and use another command to split by maximum spacing. So it will try to be as close as possible to maximum size, which is defined in the settings. It's three and a half meters. So I have three walls now the same size, right, over here. Um, another way would be like, for example, I have this wall, right? And this is sandwich wall. But uh, anyway, I will use this command to split in the center of openings. So it will it will just split them in the center between existing openings, right? And then again, as I said, you can do apply all the commands again one more time on any of the walls. For example, I will split this one in a half as well, right? So I have two the same size walls. And automated splitting is not always perfect. So that's why you can also use some manual splitting options. So for example, I um, I can draw a grid line 
and then I can use it as a splitting place. So I have a couple of views already created. I'm going to select them and say split by selected grids, select wall, escape on the keyboard, and my wall will be split it into separate wall panels. Right? So I have it here, here, over here, and just uh, split it like that with some defined gap distance, what I have in the settings. Uh, and later I will add some cutouts to, to make the joint of the uh, walls as it should be. But for now it's okay. Uh, so that's what I wanted to do first of all. So I have the geometry of my walls. The size is okay. So I'm going to leave walls for a while and I will work the floors now. So I have this big floor all over my building and what I want to do now is I want to make layout of precast labs uh, in this place. So for that I'll go to floor panel layout tool. I'll select this one floor supports. Right. I have this tool and I will add supports for my uh, precast slabs. So I pick wall, this will be my support, this will be my support. Right, so for each region um, I can pick supports and then uh, this will define how much my precast slab should be supported over this um, support elements and support elements could be beams, grid lines or walls. So in this case I select these walls and the software will remember these walls, right? So now when I click that you see all of them are highlighted. The software is just remembers about these. Alright, so that's okay. Now what I want to do is uh, go ahead and plan the layout of my slabs. So I'm gonna select layout, uh, floor panel layout planning and here I have again quite similar settings like 1.2 meter should be the size of my slab and then the direction over here and then I click the, this one I define what should be where my layout should be what should be the direction of it because it depends whether I click with my mouse I can change the direction it could be perpendicular to the nearest um, edge of the floor, right? So I do that. Um, then I have update, modify, align, delete options or split again options, right? So I can use them as well. So for example, I'm going to modify this one and change the size of it like that. Click on modify and you'll see now I have um, bigger changes or I'm just going to change the direction of it. So like that, right? So now I have just a small piece over here because it's not possible to divide it by uh, just 1.2 meter. So, all right, so I'm gonna change it as well to this size, this area, all right? So I can plan it uh, however I want. I can split them, divide them with all of these commands. But the next step is to create actual floors. So I'll go to create panels, go here, I have some settings. And here I can start um, defining what should be the size of my slabs, what should be the opening created. So I'm basically now I'm uh, selecting floor type, Revit floor type over here, and what should be the cutout. This cut families comes with the software, uh, so we will use them. Also we can define what should be the support distance. Right, so... Mm, uh, for the walls, for the framing elements, and for the grid elements, right? So I'm just gonna close this one. Um, let me check that one more time. Uh, I forgot to save it, sorry about that. Uh, one more time, let's do it like that. Um, all right, so it should be okay now. And let's try to create something for this area, for example. So when I click on one of the lines, so what's going to happen is that it will create floors. So now I have a floor element. You see the floor category over here and it has width and length calculated. And um, uh, and and the cutout is made by using um, generic model family, which is here. You see I select the generic model family. It's just 
looks like that. It comes with a software, but you can also modify it by changing this profile. And uh, because this is simple sweep, you can just modify and get different kind of um, floor shapes, right? So let me show you another uh, option, right? Panel settings, one more time, go here, select this one, select um, size of the cuts and select the size of floor one more time over here, create panels and like that. So now it's just gonna create different size of floor, right? So now it's 200 size of uh, Holocaust labs. Um, it's not necessary, uh, should be Holocaust labs. As I said, it could be any floor and any cutout. So let me show you another different kind of cutout over here like that. I'm gonna save it and then create this one and do it like that. Right, so now I have them over here. So uh, here I have slab like double T, right? Um, so these are regular step and this one was a uh, different size. So for the different size, I can additionally add a selected type of cutout. So in this case, I'm gonna use the same and uh, it's gonna be a little bit unsymmetrical but again I can create my own families how to cut this floor out and what should be the shape of it um, and the last type of slabs I want to show is the solid slabs so I'm gonna select uh, just a floor type and um, I will say that I want to have some offset from level over here and um, create panels for the face right so what I get here is I have these slabs which is offset from the reference slab with defined distance uh, and I can again modify update however I want right for example I'm gonna modify this one and I'm gonna change here a uh, value of support because uh, I want to make it a little bit different so uh, I make this offset all right let, let it be like that. Um, okay, this piece actually should be updated again with holes. So I'm going to do that one more time, right? And the result now is like, uh, if I have it like that, let's take a look from the top. And you see I have this 20 millimeter gap now. And in other situations, I have um, defined different support distance. So if I'll go to the section, you will see that I have defined 80 millimeter support over here. So it automatically is extended over this wall and supported by defined value, right? So you do that automatically and just generate all the slabs you need. Right, so that's okay. I'm, I'm happy with these slabs. We can move on to the next step, step to more detailing step. So for that, I will go ahead and use Smart Connections. Smart Connections is the tool to create, uh, yeah, basically it does what it says, inserts uh, different kind of connections. So it could be solid, uh, voids, elements placed on different faces. It could be line-based, it could be uh, point-based elements. Um, you, you see the situations where it could be used. You define uh, the element which you want to insert, right? Um, you use your face-based, line-based families. Um, depends which one do you want to place. Where do you want to place it? Then you define the rules, how it should be placed, and so on. And you have many tabs here to insert many details at once, right? So let me show you how would that look over here. So if I'm going to select couple of walls here, walls, and I will use one of the configuration I have prepared. So insert elements. Uh, let's pick this configuration, click on insert, and let's see what, what will be the result. So it's just placing now all of the detail defined and configurations in all of these walls, right? So it's running through all of them. And that's the result I get. So, so we'll see that I have this wall which has details um, at the end, at the start, details at the bottom, details at the top. 
and then you will see that additionally I have this detail which is inserted at the position of another wall and the reason for that because this tool can let me show you the configuration for this detail uh, it can find different kind of stuff it can find connections intersections wall joints and in this case it's searching for another wall for the T connection with another wall right so that's why this one is inserted over here and um, this wall for example it has a little bit different stuff so it has some details at the start but it has a, this kind of 90 degrees details at the end because this is corner situation so again it can automatically find this and this one it has just detail at the start and at the end right because this is just end uh, connections for this wall so you have uh, this kind of stuff you can automatically find uh, things and use this tool in many different situations so what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna select some floors as well over here and I'm gonna show you um, all right so I'm, I'm gonna click on auto insert it should place some details in all of them because I already defined what kind of configuration should be used so it will run through all of them and place the details which I wanted right so what happens now is that if we'll take a look to this one we have cutouts at the ends right then if we'll take a look to this double T slab uh, I have here cut out at the end I have detail at the end I have cut out at the bottom which is cutting the support place and then I have this detail and then I have distributed these elements along my double T slab right um, and uh, for these guys for I have some lifting points which is inserted by gravity points so if I'm gonna show you the configuration uh, it's uh, the rule is to place these details based on the gravity point and some relative distance of this floor so it's calculating the gravity point of the floor and based on that it's just placing these details right so that's a couple of options here um, now I'm gonna select these guys and I will also do the insert of details so we'll see uh, just another configuration for different type of walls right so we have some plates some lifting points um, similar stuff but as well we have here corbels which is placed at the uh, position of double T's and how do we do that is that mm, let me show you here one example well, for example I'm just gonna move this floor a little bit down and I'm gonna update actually the details for this one so it would not last what it had and then I'm gonna run the update of this uh, wall for the details right so let's take a look what will happen is just that these corbels were moved down right so as I said it can automatically find different kind of situations and based on that uh, do something so I place this corbel at the position of this element right I search the left and right direction of my wall and I if I find this one I place corbel and you'll see that uh, I found this one and I placed corbel automatically so I don't need to manually adjust these so that's really easy and um, efficient way to create connections right and I'm gonna switch to another view here I have some other elements here so I have columns beams beam like that beam like that like that right so these are simply created elements with using Revit like column right I just place the column I draw the beam the same way as I draw the floor and and um, walls in previous examples and now uh, what I will do just a couple of stuff over here with um, smart connections as well so I'm just gonna click on auto insert and you'll see that um, it will run through the beams and columns and it will place different kind of details right so as I said this tool could be used in uh, for different disciplines for different elements and so on so for example I have column shoes I have uh, balls over here I have corbels over here and you'll see that here I have three corb corbels because I have three beams connected and then here I have two corbels because I have two beams connected and you'll see that with this 
with the help of this tool, I can also automatically update the size of my details, right? So this bolt is very high, uh, very long, and this one is much shorter based on the beam size. So you can do even stuff like that, right? Um, and yeah, so there are much more examples for that, but we'll um, finish with that and move on to another stuff. Oh, actually, no. Uh, actually, we'll do one more thing. Uh, we'll select this, these guys and insert elements. This is the last piece. What I want to show you is that um, I'm going to pick this configuration for the sandwich wall. I'm just going to drop in some details. Right, so I have here a uh, very similar like previous one, except that uh, I have some reveals and also what I want to show you is in this plan view in the section, I want to show you like uh, I placed also this cutout. Um, actually the floor is a little bit overlapping, so maybe I should modify this one. So it would be more logical, so I'm just going to select this one, say that uh, it should be different value over here. So it should fit nice on the sandwich wall, right? So I'm just going to update that. All right, so I'm not going to need that anymore. Right, so I have this floor uh, sitting on my um, sandwich wall. And this sandwich wall already has details, but the next step is that I want to place some reinforcement, right? So I'm going to select this wall and I will go to wall reinforcement. I will go to uh, configuration and I will show you a little bit about it. So I have rebar configuration for the wall. Um, so just to create sets of reinforcement with solid, um, some settings, what should be reinforcement, what should be spacing for reinforcement, cover settings, uh, settings around opening and perimeter of the wall, right? We have this kind of settings, then we go to wall link and then we say that we want to use this configuration for this layer of wall and this configuration for this wall layer, right? And then we go ahead and um, create reinforcement. So when we do that, it will find the configurations with it, which it has to use and it, it will apply them to the wall. So it will analyze all the geometry of the wall and then go ahead and create that, right? So now I have different kind of rebars here. I have stirrups, um, I have straight bars um, and so on. But let me maybe switch back to the section view and so it's, it's a little bit better visibility. So I have uh, these guys at the bottom. I have uh, two meshes of reinforcement for this layer and only one mesh of reinforcement for this layer. And I have um, edge reinforcement going over here. I have uh, some U-shape around openings and you will see that it's also following the size of the layer. So this one is a little bit higher, this one is a little bit lower, right? So that's the way it works, uh, this tool. And if we go ahead and try to create reinforcement for beams as well. So it's very, um, well, from the workflow perspective, it's, it's quite similar, except that it has uh, different settings for the beams, right? For main reinforcement, for stirrups, how to place everything and so on. And then you link the configuration to the beam type. And I'm just gonna select these guys, maybe even isolate them and just insert create rebar and let's check it. So reinforcement was created, right? So I have some um, stirrups over here. I have some bars going along the beam. Then you'll see that I have two stirrups here before this cut out and then other stirrups just goes along the beam. And then again, at the end, we have two additional bars. So it does the same for the, all of the beams. In my case, I made this kind of configurations. Just what I want to show you is that I'm going to switch to the last view, which I want to show you. And here I have other examples of beams, right? So just want to show you a couple of possibilities, what's available in here. So 
let's say I'm gonna isolate these beams and you'll see uh, different options over here. So for example, they could be extended, we can have different positions, uh, it's not a problem to define that. And I can have two rows, I can have much more than that, I have um, different examples over here. Uh, you can also watch a webinar separately for this tool in more detail, uh, as well as other tools, they are available on our uh, YouTube platform. But um, at the moment, that's what I wanted to show you. And you can see wall reinforcement as well applied on the solid floor uh, walls over here, different shapes of uh, um, walls, right? And different reinforcement is created. Now, I want to show you one more thing is that I want to create um, sharp drawings automatic with dimensions, right? But for that, I need to renumber my elements. Currently, if I select my wall and I will check mark value so it's empty. So that's um, that's why what I want to show you now, I want to select all of the walls and I want to renumber them before I create drawings. And I will go here to annotate, tag all. I'm gonna select wall tags. So I want to place them all over my walls. And you'll see that um, this mark value is currently empty so I'm just gonna move it a little bit and I will remember now all of these walls so one more time I'm gonna select these walls so some of them I see have mark value but anyway I will remember all of them so I'm gonna select them go to sort mark tool renumber elements and element numbering and then I can say that I want to put information into mark parameter, click on OK. Then I have settings, how to group elements, how to filter them, uh, what parameters should have influence on the number, how to sort them, and what should be actually included in the uh, number, right? So I save these configurations and I use them uh, for next project. So when I click on OK, it's just run through all of the elements and it's just renumbering them, all right? So I have one, two, three, uh, this is L1, it indicates the level, for example, in my case, seven, eight, nine, and so on. So it's just renumbered to all of my elements and I can start creating uh, sharp drawings for them. So to create sharp drawings, I need another tool, which is called Smart Assemblies. It has configurations, it has sharp drawing configuration, and if we'll open this window, you'll see how does it look. It's just that you define how many views, what should be the direction of views, what should be the name of a view, visibility setting, dimensioning rules. So we have dimensioning rules where you can define how to dimension uh, openings, how to dimension details, how to dimension rebars, how to place notes, what kind of information do we want to have. So And, and for each view, you apply a different dimension rule. Right, if you want to. Uh, then you define how many schedules do you want to have, how many sheets do you want to have, what should be sh sheet uh, title block, what should be sheet template, and so on. So you define all of this stuff, and then you select um, the element that you want to work with. Or, um, all right, so I'm going to show you the first one. So just create and um, create, a, create assembly. And then I pick the configuration which I want to use and click on create. So I have one configuration for this wall. And it's just adding all of the hosted details uh, into assembly automatically. And it's just creating the views I want and then placing all the dimensions I need. So I will select this one and go down and I'll find it over here. And I will go straight to the sheet. And you see that uh, views are already placed on the sheet because I already defined that, how it should be. And you'll see I have uh, all the dimensions going all around, notes all around inf about information about what is uh, what is di dimensioning. I have some elevation and I have some specific dimension styles for some details because I can use some filters and so on. I can place schedules uh, for the assembly mass and volume. I can place um, schedule for the details, uh, some standard uh, details uh, as a legend, 
or uh, notes as a legend, right? So this is one of the examples, but what I want to show is that this could be very different, right? So for that, um, I will um, select a couple of other elements. Um, let me go back to that view as well. And I'm going to pick one more. So I'm going to pick this one as well. And then I will uh, use auto create assemblies as well. This time because I also added the names of assemblies to these elements. And uh, so it will run through all of these elements and create the, the assemblies I want. And then it will add all the reinforcement, all the hosted details into assemblies and um, calculate assembly mass. Um, it will place views on the sheet and also um, yeah, place automatic dimensions. So it's running through all of them, right? Because um, I selected three elements, so two walls and, and one beam. So I have three assemblies created. So if we'll take a look to this beam, go here and let's check what's what the views are created. So you see I have total measure, I have dimension for these voids, I have dimension for these lifting parts, I have this one for the cutouts. Uh, if we'll take a look to them to other views, right? So I have this one. Uh, this one is with reinforcement already. Then I have a beam schedule created with some information in it I have schedule for rebars right so I have all of these we can take a look to these walls um, different standard was used uh, so in this case notes on the uh, right side but the horizontal and vertical one are uh, connected with some lines right so it's different style which is quite popular and then we'll go here to this one so you'll see now for vertical dimension, I have ordinary dimension style and all of them are joined. And this, these are linear dimension style separated by type of the detail, right? For each detail, we have different dimension style and here we have all of them joined. So again, this is just the possibilities what uh, um, and how it could be used, right? Um, we can go, let's say for this type of a wall. So I have this type of a wall. Um, and again, it could be dimensioned, right? We can get some um, nice dimensions and views over here, uh, even for this type of the walls. Or the spandrel, which is quite a standard element in parking buildings, right? So I have, again, formwork, one sheet for the formwork, another sheet for the uh, reinforcement, right? So schedule and reinforcement view. And another sandwich wall, for example, I have even four sheets, right? So schedules, uh, formwork over here, um, inner layer reinforcement and outer layer reinforcement. So, and all of these, these are standard dimension styles. So you can modify them, uh, add something additionally, add notes or whatever you need. Um, also, these, all of these details are Revit family, so you can uh, modify them, move them, uh, copy, it doesn't matter, right? So you just work with these elements, with your elements, with your families. You just use these awesome technologies to make it efficient and so on, right? So this is basically what I wanted to show you uh, about, about the tools, right? You can go to our web page and you can uh, find here free trials to download tools for BIMDoc. You can find it here, you can find description, you can run video, it explains what it is. So this is our tool, right, uh, to manage all the licenses and activate tr trials. So you should download it, there are instructions how to, instructions how to use it. You can download uh, for any of these versions and start using this uh, tool. Um, have a good day and bye-bye. AGA CAD, building BIM together.